Welcome, dear students. In this session, I would talk about the attempt to reform vocabulary. Well, I hope that by the end of the session, you would understand what attempts were made to improve the condition or the status of the vocabulary. Well, my dear students, during the 18th century, there were many weaknesses um, that we can relate to all the reforms that were attempted. When it comes to vocabulary, the reforms that were brought to vocabulary or the attempts that were made to bring reforms to vocabulary had certain weaknesses. There were particular issues with the reform of vocabulary. A, everyone felt competent. You know, it was not that the specialists, it was not that the linguists with specialized knowledge in the particular area of vocabulary would, you know, uh, work on the reforms of vocabulary. Everyone felt they could do that. This was one of the major problems. The result was everyone prescribed. You know, like, you know, if you look at the Pakistani context, you would see a lot of books of English grammar are available in the market. Try to think of some standard books out of those. I think you would hardly be able to find one or two. Most of the books that are, you know, locally, you know, written here in Pakistan on grammar, they are not of a certain standard. Rather, most of them are substandard. Why? Because everybody thinks he or she is capable of writing a book on grammar, is capable of providing a textbook that would give the basic rules of grammar, etc. So, you know, this scene is not exactly the same scenario as it was there, but you can give some idea or sense through this example. Anyways, coming back to the point, you know, in the 18th century, with reference to the reform of vocabulary, everyone was prescribing and everyone was proscribing. Everyone was suggesting, telling what to do, and proscribing, banning, stopping from using certain grammatical structures, etc. So, my dear students, Swift said, I have done my best for some years past to stop the progress of mob and banter, but have been plainly borne down by numbers and betrayed by those who promised to assist me. So, you know, the complaint that he has is that kind of majority is authority sort of a rule was being applicable. And, you know, because those who had some specialized knowledge, they would be in minority, would be in lesser number. Of course, they would not get support from the mob, from the, the people who were in majority. So, you know, nobody would listen to them. George Harris also objected to certain expressions. Uh, I am pointing a few out here. He says, chalking out a way, handling a subject, driving a bargain. He was of the view that such kind of phrases are, you know, polluting the language, they are corrupting the language, and they are not correct to use. It's very interesting that despite all these efforts of these grammarians um, to formalize language in terms of grammar and to formalize language in terms of vocabulary choices, we still use, you know, handling a subject as a vocabulary item in our everyday use. A lot of times we use it. Another example is bolstering up an argument that, you know, he was against the use of. In a volume of sketches, you know, the author has attacked these words in his volume, encroach, inculcate, purport, betwixt, methinks. And, you know, there were many, many more words. This last word, subject matter, you know, despite the, you know, the, the, the historical check, you know, if we say that it was kind of banned by the, the linguists of 18th century, we still use this word very much in our everyday lives. Of the last, he says, in the name of everything that is disgusting, 
and detestable. Notice the choice of words that he has made. What is it? Is it one or two ugly words? What's the meaning of it? Confound me if I ever could guess. Yet one dares hardly ever peep into a preface for fear of being stared in the face with this nasty subject matter. You know, on the previous slide, the word subject matter that was banned. That is about that, the last one, the last word, you know, of that, about that. He says that this is a, what he calls it, a nasty word. And he says that, you know, every preface would have it. So, you know, he had serious reservations about that. In the same way, you know, you would see other linguists and grammarians and experts in vocabulary giving their opinions. Campbell says, I think there is at present a greater risk of going too far in refining than of not going far enough. I think this is where, you know, he was able to see, he was able to notice that in uh, too much of kind of enthusiasm, you know, to refine vocabulary, there was a lot of danger. This was even more than the danger of not, you know, exploring that. The ears of some critics are immoderately delicate. Now, this was a, this is a, you know, um, criticism on all those critics who would have, you know, objections to almost every second word. Yet he himself has his own list of words to be banned. It does not mean that he was flexible enough to accept all the words. So, for instance, the workmanship of God, the choice of this phrase, for the work of God, a man of war, for a ship of war, or a merchant man, for a trading vessel, you know, all these expressions that are given in red here, they were in common use, and he did not like them. He was against their use. He banned them. He also objected to some words as he thought they have a pronastic appearance, such as onto, until, self-same, foursquare, devoid, oftentimes, nowadays, downfall, furthermore, further, and wherewith. And it is very interesting that all these words still exist in the vocabulary of modern English. In fact, the problem in the attempt to reform vocabulary was that individual objections to particular expressions were catered for. This was the prevailing attitude. I like this. I don't like this. I am okay with this. I am not okay with this. This was the attitude. An interesting thing is all the words that were criticized, most of them are still in use. In a way, this was a misguided effort because, you know, languages are living beings. They keep on changing and they keep on growing and you cannot stop them, you know, from growing, from expanding. Interference with the natural course of linguistic history, actually this is what we can say that the grammarians and the linguists and the specialists of vocabulary were doing at the time when they were trying to, you know, purify vocabulary, when they were trying to remove the words they did not like.